Welcome to New York's number two sports show. We have another series preview for the American League Championship Series. It'll be the New York Yankees against the Cleveland Guardians, who defeat the Detroit Tigers in five games. A series where Cleveland was down 2-1 in Detroit, won game four late, and then they defeat Tarek Skubal in game five. So these are ultimately, the Yankees and the Guardians, these have been the two best teams in the American League. Now, did the Yankees catch a break potentially, certainly, you know, in hindsight, even more so, in facing the Royals instead of the Orioles? You could certainly argue that. As far as this series, Guardians, Tigers, I think the Yankees uh, would have been more favorable for the Yankees to face the Tigers, especially with Scooble having pitched game five. Under the scenario that Detroit won game five and to have Scooble not be ready till game three, that probably would have been a little bit more advantageous for the Yankees. That all said, always be careful what you wish for. And, you know, the Yankees have had success against Cleveland, but I think the, Car the Guardians are definitely a tougher test than what the Tigers would have brought. I understand the Tigers had this, this magic that, this sort of team of destiny, but just pound for pound, you look at the roster and Cleveland is more well-rounded now with the guardians. And we'll discuss, you know, in a little bit like the history, because there's a lot of recent history in the playoffs between the Yankees and the guardians. This is a very familiar matchup and the Yankees have gotten the better of it recently. Um, but for the guardians, they have, Definitely a lineup that is a lot better than the one that than the Yankees saw against the Royals, and what would and a lot better than what, what would have been for the Tigers. And the Cleveland bullpen is really excellent, led by Emmanuel Class A, but there's also Hunter Gaddis, Cade Smith, Tim Heron. Uh, it's a it's a good pen, it really is. And they had some struggles in the Tiger series; they were far from perfect, so that's something to look into. But it's really with Cleveland, the big thing is you have to contain Jose Ramirez. And the Yankees have seen Jose Ramirez a lot over the years. The Yankees faced the Guardians in 2017, 2020, and 2022 in the postseason. Jose Ramirez is a part of all those teams. Stephen Kwan had an unbelievably good um, ALDS and is a great table setter, one of the best leadoff hitters in the game. Um, you know, Josh Naylor was, was quiet. In the uh, in the DS versus Detroit, but look, that's a familiar. That's certainly, especially Garrett Cole, very familiar with Josh Naylor and some of his theatrics from 2022. Um, but yeah, just just let's touch on some of the you know the history between these two teams in the postseason. So this is the seventh time the Yankees are facing the Guardians in the playoffs. Most recently, 2022. This is the second time out of the six times the Yankees won four of those six series. And have actually won the last three. 2017, which was a bit of an upset where the Yankees were down 2-0 in that best of five and came back to win the series. That was Joe Girardi's last year managing the Yankees. And then the Yankees lost to the Astros in, in the ALCS. Then in 2020, that was the COVID year. It was a wild card round series, a best of three in Cleveland. And the Yankees won that in two. So they won games one and two there. That one, like, wasn't so memorable. At least, I mean, like, game, I mean, the game one was kind of crazy, right? Where, like, Gio Urshela hit, what was it, a, a grand slam or something like that? Like, it was a crazy game. Like, that game one was an epic game. But really, I don't know, like, that one w was most forgettable. And especially because, like, it wasn't even the DS. It was the wild card round. But then the Yankees would lose to the Rays um, in the DS that year. And then most recently, uh, where... 2022, which was actually the Guardians' first year being called the Guardians, formerly the Indians, uh, the Yankees won in uh, five games uh, in the ALDS, a series in which the Yankees really didn't play all that well. They were actually down 2-1 in that series, but Garrett Cole pitched a really good game in Game 4 in Cleveland, and the Yankees took care of business back at Yankee Stadium in Game 5, only for the Yankees to get swept by the Astros in the ALCS. So the Astros are a theme. I mean, the Guardians have really been taken down by the Yankees, as I just mentioned, a lot recently. So I think if you're a Cleveland fan, the Yankees have kind of been really the, the nemesis, if you will, um, recently. And, and that's perspective that, that I don't have, but just, I mean, looking at it, right? I mean, the Astros knocked out the uh, Cleveland in 2018, 
And then, of course, 2016, uh, Cleveland lost to the World Series to the Cubs. Now, taking it back a little bit further, the Yankees faced Cleveland in 1997, 1998, and 2007. And um, 97 was the first time they had ever played against each other in the postseason. Um, and Cleveland beat the Yankees uh, in the ALDS in five games. Uh, where San- and the most memorable moment was Sandy Alomar Jr.'s home run off of Mariano Rivera in the eighth inning. That was the big, uh, the big moment of that uh, ALDS. And in 1978, the other American League Championship Series besides the one coming up here, the Yankees won it in six. And, and the Yankees were tested more than ever in that series. That was an amazing 1998 season. Cleveland was the was the biggest threat to the Yankees that year. Yankees were down 2-1 against Cleveland, and then El Duque had an amazing Game 4 performance, and the Yankees went on to win it in six. And then 2007, uh, the Midges. Um, that was where Cleveland wins it in four in the division series where uh, Jabba Chamberlain, like I think that's the moment that I remember most in Game 2, all those Midges in Cleveland over him, and Cleveland ends up winning that game in extra innings, and ultimately they win that series before Cleveland goes down to... Uh, I believe it was the Red Sox in the ALCS. So this is a very familiar matchup, whereas the Kansas City Royals, that was one that had not happened uh, since 1980. Like for fans of my generation, like that's, you know, we hadn't seen Yankees Royals. We've seen a hell of a lot of Yankees Cleveland. Um, But with, like I said, most of it going the Yankees way, but most of those being ALDS series, this is the second time they're facing off in the CS. And also Cleveland has not won the World Series since 1948. So, you know, a lot of, you know, interesting storylines. And and this is just definitely a step up in competition uh, to me from Kansas City, as well as what Detroit could have been. Taking the Orioles and Astros aside, right? Because I think those would have posed different issues for the Yankees. Uh, and so... Look, if you had told me that this was the scenario for the Yankees going into the postseason, I would have taken it. I would have. Uh, like, for example, if Cleveland had faced off against the Astros, I would have I would have preferred Cleveland. Um, but the Yankees do have their work cut out for them. Um, let's discuss some potential uh, probable starters and roster stuff. And then maybe we'll get a little bit into just like, you know, who did well for Cleveland in their series against uh, the Tigers. But it's looking... So the game one starter is TBD for the Yankees. And it's either going to be Carlos Rodon or Clark Schmidt. Now, originally I thought, okay, it's definitely going to be Rodon. Not that I wanted it to be, but that just seemed logical. But, you know, the fact that they have not made that decision yet, and in looking at the numbers, which kind of surprised me, the Cleveland Guardians are a lot better against left-handed pitching than right-handed pitching. And so with that in mind, I tend to think that this might be Clark Schmidt, which I don't mind. Uh, They've already said that Luis Hill will start in the series, but not game one. And that's another thing I should bring up. The Yankees went four and two this season versus Cleveland. And honestly, Yankees could have won all six. You know, and, and look, like, I don't think that would have happened for many, many reasons. But, like, you could make that argument. So it was a series in Cleveland in April, early, early in the season, where the Yankees won two of three. And and I was trying to see, like, pitchers that started on both sides. And a lot of those pitchers that started were either are either currently injured or just were bumped out of the rotation. So Nestor Cortez actually started twice against Cleveland this season. Um, and I think he's had some success against Cleveland in the past, but it, I don't think that he is going to be available for the LCS. I think there's a chance for him if they make it to the World Series, um, but it, it it doesn't appear like that's, you know, really there. Clark Schmidt did start versus the Guardians back in Cleveland in April and did all right. Uh, a lot of walks, actually, but ended up, I think, getting the win. Uh, didn't allow that many runs. And that's kind of Clark, where, you know, again, like he, he kind of with that run prevention is pretty good, even though he may not go deep in the game. So all that to say, I think Schmidt, he might get that game one not, and I don't mind it. And then Garrett Cole's lined up for game two on normal rest. So we'll find out. But I think in looking at the numbers, yeah, I'm just surprised because, I mean, look, Stephen Kwan, he's a guy that, like, without even looking at it, he seems like someone that could definitely hit lefties. But I know, you know, they have Josh Naylor. Um, 
Jose Ramirez, I'm trying to think what side he's better from. I'm not going to make that guess. For some reason, I, I actually, he might be better. He might have better numbers right-handed, but I, I don't want to say that for sure. But yeah, because it was way different two years ago. Two years ago, I remember like at a time when Nestor Cortez like had an amazing regular season. I remember being on here and saying I was, and I was wrong. Um, which was a good thing. I was saying Nestor Cortez, like, you know what? Let him start game one. Let him have as many, like, starts. And Garrett Cole, who, like, kind of didn't have the most amazing 22, 22 regular season, but it was, they went with Cole and it worked out. Because I remember then, Cleveland was much worse against lefties. Turn that around now. Looking at the numbers now, Cleveland is worse against righties. And so don't be surprised if it's Schmidt game one and, of course, Cole game two. For, and we'll see Heal later on. Uh, and Luis Hill did have a bad outing against Cleveland at Yankee Stadium in August. That was the outing where he ends up going on the aisle with a back issue. So he did not do well there, to be sure. But the thing with Hill is at most he would get one start anyway. And that's fine. I don't have a big problem with that. But presumably it would be in Cleveland. So, um, yeah, as far as the Guardians go... Your guess is, is as good as mine for game one. I guess their game one starter would either be Alex Cobb or Gavin Williams. Um, you know, Yankees struggle more against lefties. Their only lefty starter is Matthew Boyd, who the Yankees actually did all right against. They also have Joey Cantillo, but I, I don't, he's not, he's more of like a, a long man out of the bullpen. But Boyd, I think they'll see him. Uh, he he went two innings in game five. So I don't think that he'll start either of the games at Yankee Stadium. So again, probably Alex Cobb or Gavin Williams in game one. And then game two, probably Tanner Bybee. He's like the number one starter these days, especially, you know, with uh, Shane Bieber being lost for the season early on. It's the one thing with Cleveland. It's a big difference than Kansas City. Kansas City, to me, their strength, which wasn't really fully taken advantage of for them, is that starting pitching. For the Guardians, however, uh, they don't have the greatest rotation on paper. And the Yankees have to take advantage of that, especially against a good bullpen. If the Yankees are trailing going into the seventh inning, that could be, you know, a little bit problematic. Although the Tigers did kind of get to them a little bit. So again, Cleveland's, I'm not really exactly sure how it's going to look. That's my best guess. Um, and then just as far as the Cleveland lineup is concerned, I mentioned the bullpen with Classe, Gaddis, Heron, Cade Smith. Uh, Eli Morgan is in the mix as well, uh, and some others. It, it's it is kind of it's not a lot of recognizable names out of that Cleveland bullpen, but really effective arms, and that's really been their bread and butter. Stephen Vogt, first year manager for Cleveland, I should also mention that this is, I mean, in those recent series, it was all Terry Francona. This is Stephen Vogt, so a little bit different, but a Cleveland team that certainly, you know, with, with 2022, a very similar looking roster. Um, but but certainly some changes as well. I want to discuss, you know, that that lineup. Stephen Kwan was unbelievable. Brian Rocchio, he is very impressive defensively at short and put up a pretty good offensive series as well. So look out for him at the bottom of the order. Lane Thomas was a trade deadline acquisition from the Washington Nationals who really struggled for a long time upon being acquired by Cleveland. Had a really, really big uh, ALDS. A huge three-run homer in game one a huge grand slam in game five, and he had nine RBIs in the series. David Fry, he's no slouch as well. Um, this is someone who um, ha has mostly been, I guess, a DH. The catchers have been Bo Naylor and Austin Hedges, but David Fry, watch out for him. Um, Josh Naylor was quiet in this series, but this is someone, this is one of the best uh, power hitters in the game and someone that doesn't strike out that much for someone that slugs. Jose Ramirez. He didn't really get going until later in the series. I don't need to talk about Jose Ramirez. Yankee fans know him. Everyone knows him. He is their best uh, player. Andre Simenez, he was held down a lot in the series. He was someone that um, was a lot better in 2022. But in that game five, did have a couple of pretty big hits. Again, this Cleveland lineup, like it's deep. Noel, um, and, and I don't even want to try to pronounce his first name. Um, so I'm not going to, <laughs> but Noel, the outfielder stocky, um, did not do well in the LDS, but again, like he is a power threat for sure. Um, so I look at this Cleveland lineup. It's not one of the, the greatest. It isn't, but it's, it's got 
I don't know. Th- there's different pieces that can give the Yankees issues. I just look at this team, and to me, they are more well-rounded than Kansas City. They are. Um, Kansas City has Cleveland beaten the rotation, but I'd say just about everywhere else, Cleveland is is stronger than the Royals. And another thing is Cleveland, they like to steal bases as well. Uh, Kansas City did too, and that didn't really become a problem. But for Cleveland, it might. I just remember again, in 2022, Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland came very, very close to knocking the Yankees out. They really did. And their brand of baseball, it's it it, it can be tough. This all said, my prediction is Yankees in seven games. Now, if it had been against the Tigers, I would have said Yankees in six. But against Cleveland, I'm going to say Yankees in seven. Now, I said Yan- uh, Yankees in five against the Royals. It ended up being in four, which was important. Because actually, like in thinking about it. Like, Yankees in five and Swirls made sense just holistically, but if you specifically broke down the matchups, like, Yankees would have had a tough time in that actual fifth game. This is tougher to project out in the seven-game series. Like, I don't, as far as what the pitching matchups are going to be down the line, it's hard to say. So I'm just going to, again, take it more generally speaking and seeing these two teams. Because I don't, because the Yankees, while I think that the Yankees are the more talented team, they they have flaws themselves. And so, I'm... Um, what I'm hoping for is that that the Yankee stadium is going to be host, you know, the Yankees will be hosts the game six and seven. So the key for the Yankees is ideally being up three games to two, going back home for game six. If they're down three, two, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. So that's kind of the key. Be up three, two through five games. And you're in a pretty good spot at that point. But either way, I'm going to go Yankees in seven. Uh, We're at the final four and The Cleveland has exercised a lot of demons in what they did against Detroit in fending off elimination. Like they had a really bad losing streak uh, where where they were facing elimination and as well, um, uh, winner take all games, I think. And a lot of those were against the Yankees as well, uh, accumulated. Um, But they beat Detroit in that fifth deciding game. So for Cleveland, maybe a little bit of a monkey off their chest. And the Guardians had really not come up clutch in spots. And they do it against the Tigers, but the Yankees have had their number against Cleveland. So here's how I'll leave it. I think from Cleveland's perspective, there's a lot of um, motivation. I mean, motivation's high, obviously, on both sides. But to to beat the Yankees specifically, this is a team that's caused a lot of problems to them. And for the Yankees, it's getting over that hump into the World Series. Now, usually it's the Astros that stop them. But, but that, that's been something that's eluded the Yankees. They have not reached the World Series since 2009. And so that's the thing. There's a big delineation to me where, look, I would be upset if the Yankees lost in the World Series, but you have to get there. That is the bare minimum that you have to get to. Winning the DS, that's all well and good. But it needs to be beyond that. You need to win this series. If you don't, that's a major, major disappointment. So that needs to be done. So here we go. Uh, ALCS is coming. And it's going to be the Cleveland Guardians facing the New York Yankees starting Monday night for Game 1.